Hello everyone, welcome back to Axangel RC. Today we will be covering a very interesting topic. How to get the map working within the UniGCS Android app, which in my case requires an Android system update. I need to inform you however that I do not have permission from C to share the update files for this due to concerns that people might do something wrong and break their radios which will only cause headaches for C. So I'm here to show you the process and to see if that fixes the map issue. C have asked me to tell you to contact them directly in case your map is not working and they will guide you through the process. If and when they give you the program and firmware, feel free to use this video to do the update. Just a quick reminder to hit that subscribe button and also check out the video description below if you would be willing to do a fellow some good and support this channel. Also, as you can see, I am trying out something of a new format for my videos, so I hope you guys like it. Now, let's move on. The first thing that is needed is the Qualcomm Flash Image Loader program. C recommended the 2026 version 1, which is what they use, so they know it works. They sent this to me since I was not able to find that specific version on the Qualcomm download page. They also sent me the firmware, which had to be extracted since it contains a multitude of files. Next, you will need to connect the UniRC radio to the computer via a USB-C to USB-A cable. In the QLIF app, go to Configuration and then Firehose Configuration. Make sure Erase All Before Download is not selected, then click OK. Now, to get the radio in the correct mode for the firmware update, you will need to hold down the L1 and L2 buttons together, and while holding them down, short and long press the power button, just like normal, and release when the radio beeps. In this mode, the screen will not come on, but stuff will be happening on the computer. Initially, the computer did not recognize the device. Turns out it was a cable issue. When I replaced the cable, it worked properly and the hardware was recognized, but now Windows did not have a driver for it. I used Windows Update to download some Qualcomm drivers that were listed, and after those were installed, the hardware was identified correctly and got a COM port assigned. It also got automatically detected by the QLIF app. Now it was time to point it to the firmware and get this ball rolling. Under build type, you should select flat build. Then click on the browse button below and navigate to the folder where you extracted the firmware files. Once in it, there should be only one file to choose, so select it and click open. Next, click on load XML. It will open a window in the same folder you just navigated to, and there should be only one file showing up. Select that one and click open. This will close this box and open another one to select yet another single file. Select it and click open. All that is left now is to click the download button and just wait it out. It will take a few minutes for the process to complete. If all goes well, you will get the messages download succeed and finish the download, at which point you are done. And you can close the QLIF program now hold down the power button on the radio for at least 8 seconds to force shut down the unit and then disconnect the USB cable from the computer. Next, you can short and long press the power button to turn on the system normally and it will quickly become clear if the update has been successful for real. In my case it worked. The only drawback is that it has reset the UniGCS app to the base version the radio comes with, which will require the app to be updated to the latest. This is easy to do by going to the CE website, to the UniRC listing, downloads, and then clicking the download link for the Android app, and I can actually see that there is a newer version available, so I guess we will see what has been changed. Connect the radio again with the cable to the computer, enable the file sharing on the radio and then copy the APK file over. Then unplug the cable, browse to where you copied the file and keep in mind it will not install if you click it on the recent files section of the files app. You need to navigate to the folder and then you can install it as normal. 
after the installation, even as it is loading the parameters, I can already see some changes and improvements to the app. The Mavlink notifications have been made bigger, which wasn't really a concern of mine, but it was a point raised by Tim Tuxworth and it is nice to see CR paying attention. I can also see that now you can click this param loading screen away, but you still get a param loading bar on top, just like on QGround Control. I can also see they have added a DSAM status up there under the flight mode, and now you get some error messages right above the main OSD overlay showing warnings that could potentially prevent arming. I love this. This makes the app a lot more usable, though I can see that the gimbal warning messages are still in the same format and in the same spot, which is annoying, especially this time of year, as I found out during the range test. Since the firmware update has wiped my gimbal's manually entered RTSP address, I can only call the R1M camera now, but lo and behold, it has a dedicated 180 flip button on the main controls, and guess what? It works properly now to flip the image correctly. It is no longer reversed left to right when flipped. So well done on that too, see? I do appreciate it since I will finally be able to use that camera for flying with this system. However, sadly, I am not seeing the link status data shown out here or a fair few of my other recommendations, but this is a smaller update and a few things have already been done. So fingers crossed the other issues will be sorted soon in future updates. Now let's check the main reason why this Android system firmware update was needed, the map functionality. Going into the menu to the last main tab and in the map type select Google and then go out of the menu. Click on the icon in the bottom left corner and there we have it. A map that seems to be more working than before, when it was only showing an error message saying that Google Play services are not available on this device. Now it shows all the controls and a background, but not a map, which told me I need to supply this radio with internet. After I did so, it took a few seconds, but eventually the map loaded up and it seems to be working as you'd expect. Same as it also did on the CFPV app. Also, when you tap on the map to bring it to full screen, I like how it moves the two camera streams, if you have to, to both corners at the bottom. That is nice. I have not yet really played with the mission creation settings, but I did notice the following. In the altitude mode drop down, the terrain follow option is missing, and as a person who does mapping, I can tell you that this is a critical option to have when generating missions for mapping, so see, please add this in as well. True, you can create missions in Mission Planner on a computer and then load them to the autopilot via the telemetry link you can share from the UniRC radio, which is probably how I will do it. But a lot of people would prefer to and do use the functionality within the app, especially for copters. And this is one of the more important settings when it comes to mapping, as it is important for the plane to be at a constant altitude above the ground below it, which essentially makes terrain following a requirement. I have not noticed if they've changed anything else, but even so there have been improvements made to the app already, Plus, now the map works and we now know the process to get it working in case it doesn't out of the box. So I feel like this would be a wrap for this video. Before you go, please let me know what you think of this new format for the videos. And again, subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell so you can be notified when I put out new videos and perhaps even posts. As I will be announcing the upcoming range test I will be doing on the Uni RC7 Pro system, which I plan to have live streamed. Like and share this one, it helps with the algorithm and a huge thanks to everyone who is supporting this channel. Fly safe and I will see you soon.